Let's look at the top 10 must-ads for this week in fantasy baseball. Coming up next on Beat the Odds, don't go anywhere. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to this week's top 10 must-ads for your fantasy baseball team. I'm going to be doing these all season long, so if these are your speed, show me some love and smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that way you don't miss an episode. Before we get started here, I got a couple of shout-outs from last week. Uh, Steven Burmeister called out Graham Ashcraft as somebody you should own on your teams, and he was absolutely right. He's now 71% owned, and he had a fantastic week here last week. Uh, if he is somehow available in your leagues, I would not hesitate to put him on your team. And we have one more shout-out here for Cooper Watson. Uh, he called out Jorge Mateo and Ramon Urias as players you should pick up here for your squad. Uh, now, I don't really agree on Urias. Uh, Jorge Mateo, if he's still available out there, he's... Uh, he is picked up in 66% of leagues. But if you can get him, certainly put him on your squad at this point here. He could potentially lead the league in stolen bases here this year if he gets enough playing time. All right, let's dive into the list here. Starting at number 10, we are going to go to Chicago. Patrick Wisdom, 42% owned. 333 hit last week here. Five runs, one homer, four RBIs. Uh, hitting six in the Chicago lineup here. We all know at this point here, Patrick Wisdom has prestigious power, plays multiple positions, so he's going to be able to use him in first and third and out in the outfield here. But he strikes out a lot, and he's a good bet to hit sub 240 here this year. So be careful with what you're expecting here from Patrick Wisdom. He's kind of like a right-handed Joey Gallo, great for Roto and H2H, but not quite so good for points leagues. Uh, up next, we're going to go to Tampa Bay, Isaac Paredes. 30% owned, 316 he hit last week, 5 runs, 2 homers, 8 RBIs, uh, hitting third, uh, up to third in the Tampa Bay lineup here. Uh, that lineup is extremely potent to start the year, and of course, uh, Paredes plays multiple positions as well. You can get him around the uh, infield there. Uh, but there's so many pieces in Tampa Bay, and they typically like to shuffle players in and out of the lineup, so I'm not uh, super keen on holding Paredes as a lock. Uh, in my lineup here because he's not sure to play every day. If he was, he'd be much higher on this list. Coming in at number eight, we have Josh Young. Uh, about 250 here last week, one run on a homer, four RBIs. Batting fifth in the, in the Texas lineup is not uh, something to dismiss, that is for sure. He certainly has the hitting tools to compete for AL Rookie of the Year. Uh, he hit 30 homers in 602 plate appearances in the minors. Couple that with a 919 OPS, and uh, that number five spot should provide ample opportunities to drive in runs on that Texas squad. Coming in at number seven, we are going to go back to Tampa Bay. Zach Eflin, 57% owned. Uh, last week pitched uh, six innings, uh, picked up the win, seven strikeouts, 450 earned run average, 150 uh, whip. The way Tampa Bay is showing out to start the season here, going 9-0. Uh, it makes sense to pick up uh, rotation pieces uh, in that lineup here. Just keep in mind that Eflin has a career 4.47 ERA with a 7.57 K9. Uh, those are not fantastic numbers to bank on. And also Tampa Bay's wins were against the Tigers, Nationals, and Athletics. We're yet to see them play against a top-tier team. That might change your tune a little bit on Eflin. But he certainly were pick up in the short term here. We'll see how well he does throughout the season. Up next, we're going to go to KC, Aroldis Chapman, 49% owned, three innings pitched last week here, one save on five strikeouts, uh, zero ERA, 0.67 whip. Uh, Scott Barlow's owners are a little nervous now, probably should be looking over their shoulder to, to see Aroldis coming uh, down the rearview mirror there. Eight Ks in the first four innings pitched here this season. Slider and Splitter are in, both in good form to start the season. He likely is going to pick up a handful of saves, and the way that KC's going here, I wouldn't shock me if, if Chapman's moved uh, to a contender by the deadline. Going to the Mets next here at number five, we have Francisco Alvarez. Uh, hit 250 here last week in AAA. Uh, four runs, two homers, four runs batted in, and a steal. Uh, made his debut here on Sunday, about eighth in uh, that game here. Picked up an RBI. Um, so he's likely going to get some extra playing time here over the next couple of months. Omar Navarez just went down with an injury, which prompted uh, the Mets to call up Francisco Alvarez from AAA. He has a career 913 OPS in the minors, and he's going to be hitting um, 
you know, relatively mid to low in that uh, New York Mets stacked lineup, but he plays catcher. So for those who need a catcher, this should be somebody that you should not hesitate to pick up here for sure. Uh, could pitch in 15 to 20 home runs before season's end. Going to Milwaukee, we are going to take a look at Garrett Mitchell, 59% owned here. 333 last week, five runs, three homers, four runs batted in, hitting six in that lineup there. Uh, Mitchell is known for his speed. He hasn't registered a stolen base here this season, but uh, he stole 34 bags and 472 plate appearances in the minors, and he has eight and 89 career at-bats in the bigs here as well. Uh, Mitchell is also hitting in a good spot in the, in the Milwaukee lineup, and it's possible that he could get a 20 homer and 30 stolen base season. Coming up next in uh, Colorado, we talked about him here last week, Pierce Johnson. He's now 52% owned. Three innings pitched here last week, couple of saves, five strikeouts, three ERA, 1.33 whip. Uh, certainly one of the biggest pickups in uh, the majors here over the past week. And he's got a career 10.9 strikeouts per nine innings here and a clear path to saves, of course, for the time being in Colorado uh, with Daniel Bard on the I.L. If he's still available in your league here, certainly worth a shot to see how well he does. Next, we're going to go to uh, Milwaukee, back to Milwaukee. Bryce Terang, 31% owned, 304 uh, batting average here, five runs, one homer, five uh, runs batted in, and two steals, batting eighth in that lineup here. He's a serious threat for 40 stolen bases. Uh, and, of course, Luis Urias uh, is down with an injury, which is going to give Bryce Trang more opportunity to showcase his talent in that lineup. Uh, he hit 286 with 13 homers and 34 stolen bases in AAA here last year, so he's definitely got the skills to perform at the highest level here, uh, especially over the short term. And then the number one pickup here for, uh, for me here over the past week is... Uh, San Francisco. Most people probably don't have him on his on their radars here, but Anthony Desclafani, 47% uh, owned here. He had 12.1 innings pitched here over the course of last week. Picked up a win, 11 strikeouts on 0.73 ERA and 0.49 uh, WHIP. We shouldn't forget that Desclafani uh, went 13 and 7 with a 3.17 ERA and 1.09 WHIP in his last full season in 2021 before he uh, sustained his in injury here last year. He's not going to really blow you away with strikeouts, but he's certainly capable of giving you solid peripherals and the has the potential to be a really, really good uh, SP3 on many fantasy teams here this, this year, if he can get a full season under his belt, of course. And that's going to do it here for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this here. If you did, please do leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so here. And uh, stay tuned because we will be uh, doing a giveaway for once we hit 1,000 subscribers. We're going to be doing a uh, basketball slab here, but uh, I might toss in some baseball stuff here for all of our baseball fans as well. Keep an eye on the channel there for sure for that. But that's going to do it for this one here. Thank you guys again for watching. We're going to sign off for now, but we're going to catch you guys on our next episode. Thank you.